Hello everyone, in this tutorial we will create this scene, uh, but unlike previous tutorials we will be using Octane instead of Cycles. Uh, by no means is this tutorial an introduction to Octane, you will find plenty of those on YouTube. Um, so I will assume you have a little bit of knowledge about Octane. And in case you want to learn more, I advise you to watch Cinema 4D Octane tutorials, because uh, Blender for Octane tutorials are uh, not very common. There's not a lot of resources, at least not as much as uh, Cinema 4D. So yeah, if you want to learn more, just go ahead. As per usual, the modeling part is very straightforward with some tricks here and there. Um, I started by adding a cube, uh, like a 1 meter 80 tall cube just to have a scale reference. So that way I know that my, my pot is gonna be uh, smaller than the size of a building. Right? The base shape is a cylinder uh, for which I think I only kept 16 vertices and then I removed the top and bottom faces. I selected the side faces and then double I to insert individual faces and then uh, extrude along the normals. I extruded twice to also add a support and loop so that my uh, shape does not collapse once I add a subdivision surface modifier. I also added the support and loops for the top and bottom of the little, uh, extrusions. I also, you can also bevel to add supporting loops, it's the same. Uh, I separated the bottom face by selection to model the base, which the base will also keep the same modifier, so I can just bevel to uh, make it sharp. I think I will do the same for the top, I will select the loop and then separate it to make the top lid. Then I will just uh, insert twice, after that to create the top part of the... Wait, before that I think I will bevel this, yeah, because I want it to be sharper. Then for the top part I think. Then yeah, this is where I will insert to create a circle in the middle and then extrude it up. Um, so I've, I've been using both Octane and Cycles and this is my personal opinion but I noticed that uh, Octane looks better out of the box. That's why I like using it for still, stills, for making stills. This is where I create the spout. Yeah, it's called a spout. I learned this today. Uh, I use a, a Bezier curve uh, to which I add a depth so, that's, so that it's a little thicker. And then I just ad adjust it in edit mode, like you do for every uh, curve, until it, uh, it has the shape that I am satisfied with. You can obviously change it however you like, and then I just place it. Uh, in the front of the pot. <laughs> You can add a resolution, yeah, and then I will add a subdivision uh, surface modifier to make it smoother, obviously. I also adjusted the resolution. I, yeah, first of all, you need to convert it to mesh. If you want to search for a certain function, you press F3. Yeah, I deleted these faces and then uh, extrude E to extrude S to scale. Then add a supporting loop. And now I will make the handle by using a curve again, a circle curve this time. Uh, 
same procedure. Uh, go to edit mode and then uh, shape it however you like. If you scale it in object mode and then add depth, it will be deformed, so make sure to apply your scale. Or uh, scale it in edit mode exclusively. Uh, this is where I use uh, presets. Uh, I like the this preset that I adjusted. Uh, I thought it was too thin, so I added a little bit of thickness. Now I will set up my camera. I also have a high focal length, 135 millimeters. I parent everything to the body of the pot, so that it's easier to move. I added the countertop. Lock camera to view so I can control it easier. Scale the countertop and then subdivide it multiple times. You can just subdivide it once and then press Shift R to repeat the la uh, last command. We'll create the little indentations you usually see uh, on a, an aluminum countertop. I in, uh, I to inset long individual faces and then I think I'll just move it down or uh, extrude both work and now I will model the cup glass cup 16 uh, vertices I'm also simultaneously looking through the camera to uh, check the scale of the cup. Yeah, scale is very important, especially in Octane, because it's... Uh, obviously, yeah, it's the same for cycles. They are both uh, unbiased, physically based, so... If you want to have an easier time lighting your scene, you better have a good scale. Add supporting loops. And then, uh, yeah, glass uh, 101, you need to add thickness so that it renders correctly. I talked about that in my tutorial, uh, how to light glass. You can check it out on my channel. And then, yeah, make sure your normals are not flipped. If you, sil if you solidify inwards, uh, Shouldn't be a problem with the normals, I think. But yeah, always check. Yeah, this is where I play with the rotation of the HDRI. I extrude the countertop down a bit. Later on in the scene, you can also play with uh, with the depth of field of your camera, if you want. I added the wall. Oh yeah, I beveled uh, this edge. It was too soft. Uh, for materials, I think I will be... Uh, for the wall, I will be using uh, a tile texture from Quixel, I think. I will also import some some imperfections, notably scratches and fingerprints, from there as well. I will show you which ones exactly. I will put them on the screen. Yeah, this is just 
this is just uh, details, just tweak and you can do whatever you like here. Uh, yeah, I will start by adding some materials uh, to the pot. So in Octane Universal Materials is, is like uh, Principal BSDF. It's a lot better than Principal BSV BSDF. It's also a lot longer, but it shouldn't scare you. You usually use 20% of the notes there. Of the values, I mean. We'll choose a material for the top part as well, and then link everything. So you just select everything, and then select the last object that has the material, then Control L, Link Materials. The glass is just a specular material, right? And then you put. Yeah, allow caustics, uh, enable fake shadows, and then uh, index of refraction is 1.5. You can control the roughness however you like, but I decided to add. Uh, the film is also good; it gives this, it gives it that a uh, rainbowy uh, feel. If you see on the sides. I think it looks more realistic that way. Yeah, you can render a region, a specific region, with Control B, Control B, and then you choose. These are the fingerprints that I used from Quixel. Uh, I used a gradient map to control how rough they are. Here I just checked the depth of the diffuse rays as well as gla uh, no sorry not diffuse glossy rays which by default is at 24 uh, which is already good enough because we i have glass in my scene so it needs to be a little higher i added a texture to my wall which i also got from quixel mega scans uh, i decided to disconnect the uh, displacements since it looked better without i added some scratches uh, to my to the body of my pot I also use the gradient texture, uh, so I wanted to have the feel of uh, like a paint layer. So I colored my scratches to be to have an aluminum color. We feel like there is a, an orange, a paint layer on top. You can obviously adjust, uh, adjust, sorry, the scale of your scratches. And here I create some dots on the countertop using the noise texture. So you just play with the different parameters. You can look, you can pause the video to check exactly what I did. But yeah, I just wanted some white dots on the countertop to make it a little more dynamic looking. Same as before, I did that with a mix material node. And the dots are just a simple diffuse, white diffuse material. So now I add my light. I decided it's going to be uh, a window gobo. I talked about gobos in one of my videos. You can see that as well. If you want. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you plug your uh, black body emission into emission and then you add your image gobo. And you plug it in the distribution of the black body emission. 
And unlike cycles in Octane, you don't have a spread uh, parameter that you can adjust. So you do that by changing the scale of your light. As you can see here. That's how you control whether it's harsh or, harsh or not. You can play with the temperature as well. If you want light to be uh, warmer or cooler. As well as adjust uh, the scale. And yeah, and finally, uh, I do some post processing. This is where Octane is really good. Uh, it has the bloom and glare built in, so you don't have to do it in the compositor like Cycles. And I think it looks, it looks way better uh, in Octane than the ones in Cycles. Obviously after that I did some post-processing on Photoshop. That's it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below. Have a great day.